It's a beautiful brand new week and a beautiful brand new day. I, uh, it's the weekend again. And Anaba Ejeba is my name. I'm here right on Oman channel. And I'm bringing you the weekly updates. Stories that has been trending and stories that have been happening here in Ghana. And moving straight up to the stories for the week. We are all hearing about LGBTQI+, whatever it may be. Yeah, lesbian, gays, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, plus. Yes, they are trying to tell us they are going to continue with their absurd attitude or their absurd character. And for this matter, our own lawyer, uh, Moses Fo Amweni, a private legal practitioner, and he's also um, the executive secretary of the National Coalition of Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values, has come out <laughs> to condemn the act of the LGBTQI+. Um, be, uh, whatever they are trying to say because there have been a coalition of 18 members claiming that the bill that is supposed to be passed in the parliament house of ghana is it's bogus it's not needed it's not necessary because if the bill is passed it is going to infringe on the human rights fundamental human rights of this so-called lesbians gays bisexual and transgenders and for that matter lawyer moses for amwini is claiming that he is already ready yeah he has already written his summons or his writs is ready at the supreme court so if this 18 coalition members are ready to face him in supreme court then they so be it they should come and meet him in the supreme court because in the international um, level yeah that is european court of human rights it has already defeated that act because there's no law that is binding or that is backing this lgbtqi plus people in the international level and neither is there any law backing the lgbtqi plus here in ghana so whatever they may do they can come and face him in the supreme court because he claimed that there are 47 judges in the european court of human rights that sat down on their ass for almost two years just to, co to conclude whether to accept or not but on their conclusion, they realize that LGBTQI is not part of the constitution or it's not part of the human trend. So they can't accept it and back it by law. So therefore, those 47 judges condemned the act of um, lesbians, gays, bisexual and transgenders. So if those 18 coalition members here in Ghana are threatening to use the international level or international law against the Ghana law, then <laughs> so be it. They should face them in court. It has become a matter of urgency, a matter that is really disturbing Ghanaians as to whether the bill be passed or not. But we all know, as Speaker of Parliament, his ex um, right honourable Alban Sumana Kingston Dagbin has already given his blessings to the bill which is to be passed. Other members of Parliament have also given their uh, support because it is led by eight member team of the Parliament House, which we all know, Sam George, as the leader of this. Um, group and um, backing or moving on to pass this bill for Ghana to be able to criminalize LGBTQI plus. I learned A2 has been part of it um, so that um, all people that have been uh, those be advocating for LGBTQI will be prosecuted. Those in the acts will be also prosecuted here in the laws or here in the country, Ghana. It has become a battle, yeah, a bill, a big, big battle here in Ghana. And with this LGBTQI plus still ongoing, our own pastor, our own reverend, Dr. Isaac Owusu-Bempa has also commented on this issue, claiming that he made a prophecy about this whole issue. And in his claims, he made a revelation. Now, he claimed that he made a prophecy in the year 2020, claiming that if Joe Biden should become the president of the, Repub um, the Federal Republic of um, United States of America, then lgbtqi plus will definitely be passed and it will be pressured on the people that um, america is financing which ghana is part and therefore he was praying he was earnestly praying though he liked trump and he wanted trump to win but he saw god has taken the key away from trump but later on trump um, um changed from his sins or he, he, he renewed his mind from all his transgressions and seek for forgiveness from god but all the same god wanted what he has said to come to pass so he made biden win the 2020 elections which we are all now um seeing what is happening here in ghana or seeing what is happening across the globe across the world because trump is pushing and pressing on 
for other countries to be able to accept LGBTQI+. If not, they aren't going to have any form um, of um, help from America, which um, Reverend Owusu Benpa is claiming that it really hurts. Yeah, it really hurts because Trump is, is the worst. Uh, sorry, Biden is the worst because he's always going to push, going to push and going to push forward. So LGBTQI is passed throughout the world. Before uh, before he ended his words, he also recommend, uh, recommended Member of Parliament for Ningu Pram Pram, that is Honorable Sam George, for his consistency and his and his stand firm. Where, I mean, he being able to stand firm for the LGBT bill to be passed. Yeah, because he's doing marvelous to well to pushing this bill forward for it to be passed. Because traditionally, it is against our morals, Christianity. It is against the Bible. Islamic religion, it is against the Quran. So in all these three religions that we believe here in Ghana, they are all against it. And so therefore, Reverend Hussu Benpa is really commending Honorable Sam George for standing firm for this bill to be passed. So we are urging our parliamentarians to sit. Yeah, they should sit on, the, on their bottles yeah, and pass this bill for us. Because if not, this lesbians, gays, transgender, bisexual, queers, wouldn't let or wouldn't allow Ghanaians to have their peace of mind. Moving on to the next story, I'm just entering into the controller and accountant general's department because they've also made some claims that people do not understand. And their claim is if you are a government worker here in Ghana, government worker here in Ghana, and you do not have the National Identification Authority card, I mean the Ghana card, then from December 2021, you aren't going to receive your salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as it stands now, the controller and accountant department agency or authority are now linking everything to the Ghana card. So they are working hand in hand with the National Identification Authority so that they can able to know the government workers in service for them to be paid. So they are urging each and every member um, of the government sector to find or to get themselves with a credit um, Ghana card, and this was signed by Mr. Bosompim, the controller and accountant general's department. Yeah, he he's the one who signed this letter or this of um, um, this notice for each and every uh, government worker for them to be added to the payroll. If not, December 2021, they end getting their salary. People were really condemning this act, saying or claiming that even the Ghana card. Majority of them have not even got their card. When you go to the NI office, they'll be giving you a lot of bullshit. Yeah, that is what they are claiming. That they aren't even servicing Ghanaians well at their office. Because anytime you go there, they will tell you to go to the offices or the MCE office. That is where they've already kept their cards. If you go there too, they will tell you the NI people to, um, to distribute their cards there in the office are not there. So what at all? Are they even claiming or what are they even telling Ghanaians to do? As it stands now, nobody knows. Others are even claiming or asking them to ex um, extend the time as the registration or the, the re-registration of the SIM cards has been extended. They're also asking the um, controller to also extend their time because December is is very it's a very crucial month for Ghanaians because celebration there are lots of celebration within that month. So if they tell Ghanaians they're not going to pay them, then which means they want lots of Ghanaians to really starve during the Christmas season. And that, that, that is it for the controller and accountants general's department because uh, people are really, really talking about it. And people are also claiming that it's really going to help because there are lots of ghost names. Yeah, ghost names in this government payroll and whatever it is. So if they're going to use the Ghana card, I think it is going to help. That is what people are also claiming. All right, moving to our next story. I'm moving to the central region. And because there is an absurd attitude of one man called Dawood. Yeah, one Dawood, who is supposed to be the central regional communications officer for the National Democratic Congress. Um, yeah, NDC. And he is the regional communications officer. And it is claimed or it's purported that the, our own officer, Kwesi Dawood, has allegedly impregnated his own daughter, an underaged, I think, 15-year-old daughter, and has aborted the pregnancy for the alleged daughter. Kwesi Dawood is, has back again claimed, has once again claimed that that purported daughter is not 
that alleged daughter is not his daughter yeah it's not his daughter but it stands now he has been arrested and he's been arranged for court it has been an a, 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 an absurd situation because the mother that is maybe Aite, has been really really furious upon this issue because the the police that arrested um Dawood, which is the Swedish police the, uh, command which arrested uh, Dawood, it seems they have a friendly um, relation with uh, Dawood. so the charges that were supposed to be meted out to Dawood wasn't meted out to him and therefore it took the mother maybe it's Aite, to move on to central regional command for the case to be taken up before Dawood was arrested and arraigned to court and it's it's really sad it's really sad even if the alleged daughter is not Kweti Dawood's daughter it doesn't give him the right it doesn't give him the right to go to the extent of having sexual affair with her and to the extent of getting her pregnant and aborting it for her which is really 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 not cool yeah really not cool and people are claiming that it is bringing or tarnishing the image of the ndc especially their former flag bearer which they think will be will be standing or becoming the flag bearer again for them in the year 2024 which is um his excellency um mahama yeah his excellency john german mahama he'll be the one to stand for them again so therefore that wood's image or that wood's um, character has become something that is staining or tarnishing the image of his excellency Mahama. Moving on to our next story. Um, you we, we all could remember that within the week or within the within last week, yeah. Ahmed Swali, the slain journalist, Ahmed Swali's wife, second wife, uh, alleged second wife, came out claiming that Anas Armiya Wanas, the former boss of the slain journalist, or the boss of the slain journalist, promised to take care of the wife and the children which he did for almost one year and afterwards has now ignored them not taking care of them anymore but the second wife is claiming that they are now been here she has now been ejected from the house she was staying in and it created a, a whole lot of tension and controversies on social media but the whole truth is um, anas armian has also came out to claim that she had he or he has been taking care of them so now to date so he doesn't even understand why the so-called or the second wife has come out to claim that he doesn't take care of them. And meanwhile, he also claimed the second wife has already gone back to the family members and has been remarried to another person. Whether truthful or not, we all don't know. But Honorable Kennedy, um, yeah, Honorable Kennedy is upon the Maverick politician and the member of parliament for Ascent Central has donated or dashed 50,000 Ghana cities to the claimed um, second wife. To cater for the family and the kids so people have already applauded um the maverick politician for the good he has done people are really saying honorable Kennedy japan has done well some are also saying that he's doing this so that people's mind will be taken off the fact that he is the cause of the death or he's the one behind the death of ahmed swali we all can tell but we all know you and i know that honorable Kennedy japan has been well known or he's well known for his arms yeah giving of arms here in ghana he dashes out to each and everybody whether he knows you or not he dashes out be, to people so he doing this is never um something that people should worry themselves or some people should pepper target with the negativity or target with something um which is not nice yeah but this story was broke to ghanaians through kweku anania the host of the seat show on the two yeah, he's the one who um, broke this news out to Ghanaians and uh, afterwards uh, Honorable Kennedy Japan has really received applause for the good he has done. Moving on to our next story is a really sad story for the week and which is um, former Minister of Aviation Kofi Ada is dead. Yeah, Kofi Ada has passed on to glory. Joseph Kofi Ada died at the age of 65 years at the Legon Hospital on Thursday, October 14th. That is when our own Honorable of Minister for Aviation, sorry, former Minister for Aviation, died. And this news was broke to us by a relative of Mr. Ada, claiming that he was battling with a, a, an illness. Yeah, he was battling an, a short illness, which he couldn't stand, which took him or passed him on to glory. And Honorable Kennedy Nako Osei, who is the former Deputy Minister for um, Agriculture, also confirmed the news 
to Ghanaians and claim that the seventh parliament is really going to miss Honorable Kofi Ada because he really served well. He has served throughout for through um, the MPP regimes. I think from former President Kufuor's regime, he served and also came to serve in um, Nana Adedan Kufado's regime and he really, really served well. So therefore, the seventh parliament is really going to miss his deeds, his works and his, his friendliness. They are really going to miss him. And moving to his um, his own region or where he represented, yeah, Narungu Central, they are also um, bereaving him or they are also bereaved because he was a real hero, a real legend to them. He really did his work well. He always made sure that his constituency or everything that they needed as a constituency was served to them. And therefore, the chairman for the new patriotic party in the Narungu Central has urged all their flags to be masked at half yeah he has urged every um every constituency in the nabongo central to mask their uh, mark, uh, their flags at a half mast that is chairman mensa kofi anthony he is the one saying this and he's saying that it is unbearable for them since their heart has been wrenched with his death all right moving on to my next story and i think that will be the last story for the week yeah will be the last story for the week it, it has been so 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 um hectic <laughs> as i was saying there has been heinous crimes committed here in ghana th throughout this year and no one knows why this um story this crimes has been happening but all the same it has happened here in ghana so if you think ghana is a peaceful country it is a peaceful country but there are certain things that is happening that you can't even pinpoint you can't even get your mind through it it is so disgusting. Moving on to my last story for the week. We are moving on to um, Kumase, the Ashanti region. That is where one Kwabna Efriye is in the police custody for allegedly beating his ex-wife to coma. Yeah, he has allegedly beaten his ex-wife to coma. That is, ex-wife is Prophetess Hagar. Yeah, Prophetess Hagar was beaten by a free year, Kwabna Efriye, a 43-year-old man. And... Due to the divorce, it was through all this beating that led to the divorce. After the divorce, the woman is supposed to be um, staying at Puano. Yeah, and the man is supposed to be staying here in Kumase or right in Kumase. But he, according, according to Kwabnefi, he traveled. Yeah, he traveled and, and he has two kids with Prophetess Hega Efriye. And therefore, he wanted to pass by and see or visit his children before going home to rest. But as he got to Puano or got to his ex-wife's home, it was really late. So he urged or he asked his ex-wife that he could um, stay behind for the next day and then leave. But <laughs> this man, due to uh, his... No one knows what is really upstairs in his head. Confer uh, had an issue with the man or the, the woman and later on beat the woman blue black blue black blue black blue black and the woman passed on and went to coma but thank god the woman is out of coma and out of trouble or out of um critical issue or critical condition but it's claiming and it's urging the prayer the police to really deal with the ex-husband because the ex-husband can come back at any time and hurt her so the she's really begging the police to make the loss deal with the ex-husband so that he can never be able to come back and hurt her and the children again it has been a tremendous week and that is where i'll put my stories to an end for you and i urge you to stay glued to your seat here right here on the mind channel don't don't change the dial that is be on your mind channel because nana will always come your way same time next week i'm out <laughs>